we now know that in order to have incremental power gain, we need to have a nonlinear two port. What we will now do is look at the nonlinear two port, specifically its incremental linear equivalent and establish the conditions for maximizing the gain. Okay. So far we have talked about power gain, but for simplicity here I will consider voltage gain, but you will easily see that maximizing this the way I do it also maximizes the power gain. Okay. Let us assume that we have a three terminal nonlinear two port for uh, simplicity. And we have the port one voltage and port one current, port two voltage and port two current. The nonlinearity is given by currents as functions of uh, voltages. Like I said earlier, other representations are possible. Okay. Now, let us also say that there is some operating point. We will later worry about uh, what exactly the operating point is that we must choose. Okay. So, at the operating point, we have the port 1 and port 2 currents. Now, if we take the incremental equivalent circuit around the operating point, what do we have? We know that it is going to be a linear to port and because we have here currents as functions of voltages, in this case we will have y parameter description. Okay. And the port 1 and port 2 incremental voltages and currents are given here. Okay. this and that and that and that all are incremental quantities. What is it that we do? We connect a source, a signal source to port 1 of this uh, incremental equivalent and a load to port 2 of this incremental equivalent and evaluate the gain. Okay. This is still the incremental equivalent. We will get some constraints for maximizing the gain. Then we look at those constraints and see what it implies for the large signal, the total characteristics F1 and F2 of the nonlinear two port. Okay. So we will now assume that we have a signal source Vs with a resistance R s. This is the representation of any source. Okay. Signals can come from some sensors, let us say the microphone into which I am speaking and it can be from uh, some other stage, let us say another amplifier's output or it can be anything. Okay. Uh, the bottom line is it always can be in general represented by a voltage source in series with a resistance. Okay. Now, we connect that to a linear two port, which we know is the incremental equivalent of the nonlinear two port. Okay. 
because we have already established that we need a nonlinear two port to have incremental power gain. Okay, so this is the incremental equivalent of a nonlinear two port. We will later see when we go to the specific device how to come up with a circuit which has this as the incremental equivalent. We will somehow assume that the incremental equivalent of our uh, circuit is such that the signal source is connected to port 1 and the load is connected to port 2. Okay? So, this part is pretty simple. Now, we have we have to solve for the output voltage V naught which you see is exactly the same as this V 2. Okay. So, essentially we have to solve for V 2. So, first of all we have relationships imposed by the two port. Okay. This must be familiar to you from regular circuit analysis. Every element in the circuit imposes some uh, constraints between its voltages and currents and you take all of the constraints and solve for the circuit. So, this nonlinear two port by the way I could also draw the small signal equivalent of this using conductances and control sources that is the circuit equivalent of the y parameters. So, it will be the same thing y 1 1 v 1 plus y y 1 2 v 2 and i 2 will be y 2 1 v 1 plus y 2 2 v 2. Okay. In addition to this, we have a relationship from this side. We know that the voltage across this resistor is V s minus V 1. Okay. That is here we have V s minus V 1. So, the current through this which is equal to I 1 has to be V s minus V 1 times 1 by R s or G s which is the conductance. Okay. And on this side I 2 is the current flowing in R l, but from bottom to top. Okay. So, this imposes a constraint between its voltage which is V 2 and its current which is I 2. Okay. So, what do we have? I 2 will be equal to minus G L times V 2. Okay. This comes about because I 2 is flowing in the upward direction. Okay. So, now we have these uh, four equations and we have uh, four variables. So, we have to solve for I 1, V 1, I 2 and V 2 okay? and it specifically it is V 2 that we are interested in. We have to find a relationship between V 2 and the source voltage V s. Okay? So, at this point I would ask you to uh, pause the video and solve these simultaneous equations by yourselves. Okay? I hope you are able to solve for it yourselves. It is a simple system of uh, linear equations. So, let us see. I will not show every step of the calculation, but uh, show you how it is done. First of all, you can substitute this into that. Okay? From these things we have to eliminate I 1, I 2 and V 1. Okay. So, by substituting this into that one, we will get a relationship between V 1 and V 2. So, we will see that we will get V 1 to be equal to minus Y 2 2 plus G L divided by Y 2 1 times V 2. Okay. Then, we can take this one and this one and put it in here. Okay. 
So, when we substitute this into that, we will get V s minus V 1 times G s equals Y 1 1 V 1 plus Y 1 2 V 2 and we can substitute this one into this to completely eliminate V 1. And if you obtain the final expression, you will see that V 2 by V s will be equal to minus Y 2 1 G s divided by y 1 1 plus g s y 2 2 plus g l minus y 1 2 y 2 1. Okay. So, this is the expression for the voltage gain and you can also from this make an expression for power gain which will be related, but of course, little more complicated than this. The output power will be V 2 square by R L and the input power and the available power from the source which has a source voltage of V s and a source resistance of R s. This is the maximum available power which you know from maximum power transfer is V s square by 4 R s. You can calculate this. This is the power gain. Now, this expression will be a lot more messy than this. So, I will just maximize this though our intention is to have a large power gain. It turns out that the conclusions we draw from maximizing this will be exactly the same as what we get from maximizing that one. So, I will stick to the simple expression for now, but you can as an exercise try to do this and you will find that you will get the same answer. Okay. So, why did we calculate this? We have some gain and of course, we would like to have uh, as large a gain as possible mainly because we are greedy. Okay. I mean we have a small signal and we want to amplify it as much as possible. That is our aim is to realize amplifiers and amplifying by a large amount has lots of benefits. Now, one obvious thing is so that you can make a, a small signal large, but uh, you also know from preliminaries of negative feedback that you have to have a large gain in order to realize an effective negative feedback system. Okay? So, large gains are very useful. So, that is what we will try to do. Okay.